What's up guys, it's Optic Tubar, and this video is a basic tutorial series which will sort of get you guys up and running with Adobe After Effects so you guys can follow along with my more advanced tutorials. So the software that I, I use is Adobe After Effects, which is it's pretty much like Photoshop for video, and it gives you a lot of control on like doing all sorts of different things, basically doing whatever you can think of pretty much. Alright, to start things off, I'm going to give you guys a tour of the interface. So here we are in Adobe After Effects CS6, which is the latest version as of right now. And it may look a little bit intimidating, but once we go through everything, it's really not that complicated. You have your file, you have your menu system up here, and you have all these different panels which you can click on to activate them. And the ones that are activated have the yellow outline. You can actually move these windows around too if you click right next to, right on these dots here. You click them and you can drag each window wherever you want so you can customize your workspace. Um, don't worry though, if you completely mess it up like I have, you can come up to Window, Workspace, Reset Standard. So if you ever mess anything up, just do that and you'll, you're good to go. So here is the project panel where you will organize all of your media, including stuff that you bring into After Effects like clips and music, and stuff that you create in After Effects. So I'm going to go ahead and import some clips and some music. So I'm going to go into File, and then Import, and then File. And then you can navigate to your clips. You can click on a clip to import it, or you can import multiple clips. You can see, here they are. There's also another way to import stuff. You can just double click in the project window in an empty space and import stuff that way. You can also select a folder and then just press import folder and it'll import the entire folder here. Uh, you can also just group stuff into folders by creating a new folder by pressing this button here and then organize stuff this way. So I'm going to drag all my clips into this folder, select this and press enter and then rename this to clips. And then that way we have our folders and we have everything organized and you can just open these up here. All right, so down here is the timeline panel, which is where you're gonna be doing all of the editing. And then here is the composition window where you get to see what you're doing, but obviously we don't have anything open yet, so it's empty. So what I'm gonna do is create a new composition. So to do that, you just go under composition, new composition. And here pops up the settings for the composition. You can rename this to main composition or main comp for short. Now, these are the settings that you want if for Call of Duty clips. 1280 by 720 resolution, square pixels, 59.94 frames per second, full resolution. And then for the time, you want to make this however long you think your main composition is going to be. So usually a good number is like three minutes or so. So the first digits correspond to frames, the second two digits correspond to seconds, and then minutes, and then hours. So we have three minutes here. Then you can just press OK, and it will create a new composition in our project panel, and it will open it up, and you can see here we have a blank slate to start editing. So the way to bring things into our composition to actually start changing stuff is if you go to our project panel and find some stuff you want to import, I'm going to import this song here. You can just click and drag it down and it will import. So here is our very first layer and you can click and drag to move this layer around in time. I could import some clips here to show you what that's like. Just drag one of these down, place it there. You can see the, the clip is a much shorter than the song is, obviously. I can just keep dragging in different clips here. And you can see they all show up as layers in the composition window. This red line here, this is called the current time indicator. You use it to preview what you're doing by clicking and dragging. You can scrub through your footage. And it shows you where in time you are. So right now I'm at 5 seconds, 51 frames in. I could jump to 15 seconds all the way up to 2 minutes and 45 seconds and it'll just jump me through time here. So 
I can also do the same with moving these clips throughout time. I can also zoom into my timeline by pressing these buttons here or plus and minus on my keyboard. See everything gets bigger or smaller. So what I'm going to do is actually move our song to the bottom of everything because I'd like to keep my song on the bottom. I'm going to move this clip to the very start and then I'm going to zoom in to focus on just this first clip. So every layer has different properties and you can see these properties by opening up this little twirl down menu here. So this is the song. So if I scroll down the audio settings, you can see the waveforms pop up. These are some settings that all audio files have. So I can move this song along here to get farther in the song. And you can see sort of what's going on in the song just by the waveforms. So for video, if I open down the menus, you will see transform and audio. So the video has audio too, just like the song, but it also has transform properties. So that means you can scale stuff up. If you click and drag these numbers, you can rotate stuff. You can position stuff. And the anchor point is kind of like position, but not really. If you ever make a mistake and you want to go back, you can come up to edit, undo, undo right here. Or press control Z. I like to use the shortcuts. You can apply effects to layers by selecting the layer, coming up to effects and then picking an effect. I'll pick, let's say, Blur and Sharpen, and then maybe Fast Blur. And what this will do is open up the Effects Controls panel right here. It takes the place of our project panel, but we can get back to our project panel. It's just right here. So you can see there's two tabs here, the Effect Controls, and then you might have to scroll down this way and here the project panel. So they both live in the same place, but like I said before, you can move stuff around. So maybe you want to have the effects and the project panel. But I'm going to go ahead and move it back for now. All right, so under the effects controls, you can see that we applied a fast blur to this layer or clip here. I can scrub the number forward and it'll blur out. And I have other options like only blurring on the horizontal, which is kind of cool, or only blurring on the vertical, all sorts of different cool things here. You can also see effects that popped up down here under our submenu of the clip. And you can access all the same stuff down here on the timeline as you can up in the effects controls. But it can start to get messy down here. You can always close all of this just by pressing that right there and it'll twirl back up. Alright, so if I scrub through my clip, you can see that it's a nice quad feed. So let's say I wanted to blur it out before the first kill. Well, if I select my clip and come up to the effect, I can, first of all, repeat, check this box and then blur it out. But it'll just stay blurred the entire time. So that's what this stopwatch button in here is for. If you click this button next to any of the properties that has this button, it will tell the program that you want, you want it to remember this value at this point in time. So then I can come up under these settings here under effects, fast blur. It created this little diamond here. Now, if I moved later in time, let's say before the first kill, I could set another keyframe which is what this is, this diamond is called a keyframe. I could set another one by pressing this button and then change the value. And it remembered the value that we had before. So what it does is it goes from blurred to the next value, which is no blur. And then maybe you want to go back to blur. It'll create another keyframe. And you can see that's how that works. So you can create cool effects like that. And it really starts to look cool once you make these effects go with either the music or go with the gunshots and that sort of thing, which is a little bit more advanced, so we'll cover that later. But you can see kind of 
how this concept works, I hope. It's a little bit complicated, but hopefully you guys understand it. It's just all about remembering different values at time. And you can move these diamonds around to change the timing of this animation that we created. Um, so it's all about lining it up the way that you want the effect to be. So I could go ahead and grab another effect. Maybe I'll type in something like turbulent displacement. And you can see once you start typing, it'll show up. And you can just drag this onto your clip. Drag the effect right onto the clip that you want. And it'll show up alongside the other effect that we have, the blur. And you can see this already has distorted our clip. So what we can do is set another keyframe, like just like before. So go to the spot where you want the keyframe to start. Select the button next to amount. Move later in time where you want it to change, set it to, let's say zero, so it goes away. Move forward in time again, and set it back up to, let's say 50. And if you select your layer, and press U on your keyboard, all the keyframes will pop up. And you can see that we have created a sort of a blur, displace, distortment, and it kind of looks cool. So if you really want to get fancy, you can sort of line these these keyframes up to certain points in the music. You can see here is a little peak here. So maybe have it. You can sort of move these these keyframes around as long as you remember which values they were. And you can also delete keyframes just by selecting them, hitting delete. I'm going to undo that. Or you can select multiple keyframes and. You can just basically do whatever. It's it's pretty intuitive moving these things around. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these two. Move later. And I'm going to set these values down to zero. Both. Or this one, yeah. This one down to zero. So what I've just created is a little blur and distort. And then it goes back down to zero. And this will look cool if like something happens in the music that sounds kind of like that. You know, like a little... It's sort of a dubstepy sort of bass thing or you know whatever. So that's that part's all about just being creative with whatever song that you're using. If I zoom out all the way here, I'm gonna grab what is called the work area. And I'm gonna drag it into just the part that we were working on. So let's say about here. I'm gonna zoom back in. Move over to what we're working on. And to preview what we just created, this little animation in real time with music. So you can see what it actually looks like. Set your work area, which I just did. And then press this button right here in the preview panel. It'll load up what you have created and it'll play it back. You can see that that little animation that we created kind of goes with the music a little bit. Let's watch it one more time. So, obviously this is pretty basic, but things will get more advanced once you start messing around and uh, doing stuff on your own. So I think I'm going to end it here guys, I don't want this to go on too long, but hopefully this helped some of you guys who didn't really know much about editing at all and want to start learning. I'm going to keep doing these at certain points throughout my other tutorials to help those of you who need it, uh, so you guys can keep up with the more advanced tutorials. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you guys in the next video.